Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. I welcome you back to the channel, and this time around, as you can see, or as you can see my face, this is going to be the first video of this type. This is a discussion video of a topic that has been all the rage in Wano Country, in the Wano Country saga, and yes, this is going to be a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I decided to do it like this, instead of you standing for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know how long my videos are. Instead of you sitting there just looking at my mug, I decided that it would be funnier this way to put up a little montage and go along with that. So, the topic today, as I've said and as you've seen, is the Wano Traitor Slash Spy. Now, this is a topic that has been on everybody's mind ever since... Well, not ever since the arc started itself, but we'll see where it started. So, the possibility of a traitor was first mentioned in chapter 936 by Shinobu. You remember when Shinobu, Nami and Robin were at the bathhouse, and then Hawkins and the Wano officials and the Beast Pirates all arrive and start looking for people with the Crescent Moon tattoo. So, this is where Shinobu and Nami realized that something went wrong. Like, something was leaked that was not supposed to be. So, okay, over the next few chapters we start to see the consequences of that leak. In chapter 938, we, I mean, even in, in 1936, but in 1938, we realize that all the allies, all the people who have that tattoo, start being arrested in the Reset Dunn's prison. Now, things in these few oops, sorry, things in these few chapters get a little hectic because in chapter 941, 941, Yasuye is arrested. And Yasue, with his dying words, tries to shift the focus from the Alliance and from their plan. He distributes the new, the new harbor paper. He claims that it was all a lie created by him. It was a prank. He claims he was the witching hour boy, which they rapidly get on that it's not him because the times do not coincide. Uh, that's a whole... That's a whole other can of beans, the, the Witching Hour Boy. There's a lot of other cans of beans in, in this arc. But, and so, yeah, with his death and this sacrifice, we think, okay, things will be okay for now. Well, not really. In chapters 958 and 959, which were actually the last chapters before the Odin flashback, in fact the Odin flashback even started at the end of 959, we see that the plan has gone to hell. Orochi destroyed the ships, he destroyed the bridges, he supposedly destroyed the sunny, so everything has gone to hell with the plan. <clears throat> and again, he claims that his intel is true. So, okay, this just could mean that he has a network of spies, like he has the Oniwavan shoe. We don't know how, uh, how can I say this, how, how good they are. I, I'm, I find myself lost at words, but how good they are. So, it could be the, Oni, the, the Oniwavan shoe, we don't know, but... I chose to see this intel source as the traitor slash the spy. Now, the one thing that gave new fuel to this theory after the Odin flashback, because we went through the all the Odin flashback not seeing any hints, any possibility of who the traitor might be, until chapter 970 where Kaido outright admits that there might be a spy in Odin's midst. 
Like, this could have been done just to mess with Odin. But why? Like, this topic has been going around for the better part of this arc now. Ever since Odin's flashback began, people have been like, who is the traitor? We're gonna find out who the traitor is in this flashback. Well, 20 chapters in the flashback, we still have no idea. Sure, we spent a lot of time out of Wano, so we didn't see a whole lot about the, the scabbards or Odin's allies or Odin's family for that matter. Yes, Odin's family is a suspect on my list. And um, it's weird, why would Kaido just... If, if this was a one-off thing, like, if everything from beyond had not been touched, like, imagine that the events in chapters 936, 38, and 41, and so on, that the initial possibility of a traitor hadn't been addressed. Like, everything went smoothly until 958 and 959, where... It would, it would have been much more impactful, if you ask me. Uh, imagine we get to 958, everything is going smooth. We're, we're already imagining everyone gathering at the port and going to Onigashima and kick some Kairos ass. But no, nothing happens. That would have been impactful. And then, maybe then, this, this line would have made a bit more sense. Because right now, it's... It's really odd, because we don't have any clues. Granted, I know that most of the time that's how it is with Oda. We don't get much many clues as to what's happening. Like, we arrived at Laugh's Tale for God's sake, and we don't even know how the island looks like. Just a tiny bit, not even the beach. Not even the, the beach or a port on the island. We just know nothing. So, I don't blame Oda for that. But still, come on, throw us a bone. Okay, so, who is the spy? Like, who is this guy that leaked their, their journey to Onigashima to kill Kaido, leaked the Crescent Moon tattoo, the, the port information, everything from the location of the Sunny. The location of the Sunny. Like, that's a huge thing. Like, it has to be someone... I don't know, I, I actually haven't checked that, I should have checked that. I don't know who else knew of the Sunny's location. Like, I know Luffy did, and I'm assuming he told Frankie and the other guys. So maybe there was someone, maybe the spy was around. Because that's, that's another thing that I forgot to consider. Because they destroyed the Sunny, so unless they were just actually roaming the skies and looking for it they went specifically for the place where the sunny was so that was something i forgot to consider but let us go through the possibilities again these are my possibilities if you have other possibilities please go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below but let's begin so we have odin and i'm gonna focus on odin's closest circle so i'll start with his family we have Kozuki, Toki, Momonosuke, and Hiyori. For his allies, we have Shik Shimotsuki Yasuye and Yogoro the Flower. Then we have all his retainers, the Nine Red Scabbards. We have Kinemon, we have Denjiro, Kiku, Kanjuro, Raizo, Ashura Doji, Inurashi, Nekomamushi, and Kawamatsu. And last but not least, I left her as the lone wolf scenario because it's Shinobu and yeah Shinobu is going to be debunked in a little bit so starting with the debunks Tonoyasu and Hyogoro the flower I just put them here just because it looks cool to have all <laughs> all the character portraits surrounding Odin but no I put them here because they're part of Odin's closest circle but it made no sense for any of them to be a traitor. Like, Yasuyu, Yasuye and Hyogoru, they suffered a lot through those 20 years after Odin's death. 
like I dare say that between the the retainers that were left in the in the that were not sent to the future and Shinobu and even and even Hiyori, I dare say that these two suffer the most. Like Hyogoro was arrested for God knows how long. He gone. He transformed from this hulking man to a tiny fragment of his former self. And then we have Yasuye, who ate a smile, was robbed of all emotions, but emotions of joy. Saw his daughter having the same situation, and the whole Ibiza town in the same situation, and still he fought to to better the conditions of those people. So, I dare say, these men are legends. Outright legends. So, then the next one that I debunk right away is Kinemo. Like, most people would say, okay, none of the scabbards are off the hook. I dare to digress. There are five scabbards for me that are out of the hook. The first one is Kinemon. Like, it would make no sense. Kinemon and Enjiro were the first scabbards to join under Odin's proto um, under, under Odin's. So, he's the leader of the scabbards. Although it would make his betrayal or the, all the more impactful if it was the case, I sincerely doubt that Kinemon would be the one to do it. Like, because if he was, like, it wouldn't make sense for him to be 20 years in the future. He was left alone with Momonosuke. If he wanted to betray the family, like, he couldn't just toss Momonosuke in the sea and be done with it. Honestly. So... If that was his plan, if that would be his plan all along, unless they were saving, oh, we gotta get the Kozuki together in Wano and crush them there, crush their hopes and dreams, and crush the hopes and dreams of all the people in Wano. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. So, Kinemon, for me, is debunked. The next one is Ashura Doji. And this would be the, this would be the argument for the next three that I'm going that I'm going to present, you can already guess who they are. He was in Wano. He suffered for twenty years the fall of his house, the fall of his friends, the fall of his country. Like this man went from being a bandit to being a samurai, and then he was forced to be a bandit again. He saw the man who turned him from bandit to a higher standing man, to a samurai, get crushed. I dare say that of all the people that were left in the present timeline, we don't know about the Jiro, but of the of the four that of the five that stayed in the present timeline, or in the timeline that saw the twenty years go by. Ashura Doji, I think it was the that the one that was shown that suffered the most as well out of the scabbards. Not comparing with with Yogoro and the and the Yasuya, just off the scabbards. So the next two Inuarashi and Nekomamushi, the same reason. These guys stayed in the in the timeline. They saw the twenty years go by. They went back to Zo, and would you do you really think that they would risk? their hometown, their home country, just for this? If they were the traitors, surely they would have to to have found some countermeasure to not having the debunkle that they had in Zo. So, yeah. And the last of the retainers, the last of the scabbards, is Kawamatsu. Like, Kawamatsu was arrested for 13 years. You know, if he was indeed the traitor, I doubt he would have been treated like that. Because why would you keep a guy... I mean, unless, of course, you know, oh, you were a traitor. Yes, you worked for us, but you're much... You're much who says you can't betray us again the same way you betrayed them? You know, it's that kind of thing. But no, 
Kamatsu was left arrested for 13 years. He held... <coughs> I am so sorry. He... He took care of Yorin for about 7 years or something. Then he was arrested. He was just recently released. And the same as in Warashi Nakamamushi, he owes Odin a great debt. Like, they, these three were persecuted against when they arrived in Wano. Odin was the one that drew them a hand and saved them from that persecution. So, Inu, Neku and Kawamatsu, I do not think... I would be very, very sad if any of these three would be the traitor, because I love them, I love them three, like... They are my favorite of the scabbards, looks-wise, personality-wise, everything. Like, so yeah. The next one is a bit obvious, it's Momonosuke. Like, okay, Momonosuke is a child. Unless there was some very sick thing going about, he wouldn't be the one to be the traitor. Unless he was an, a, an unwilling traitor, but I'm gonna save the unwilling part for a little later. And the last one, and the one I'm going to justify next, is Shinobu. So, why not Shinobu? So, we saw in chapter 969, uh, Full of a Lord, that Shinobu was privy to the conversation between Odin and Orochi. We know that she knows what the deal between them was, and that she... That was one of the reasons why she decided to betray Orochi and join Odin's side. And yes, she joined them in battle, and after the battle ended, Odin had the intelligence to send her away. This is important because this is what's gonna it's what's gonna help the scabbards to run away. It's the fact that Odin said, Oh, you're not my retainer, I don't know who you are. You came here to take my life, so get lost. So a lot of people, I want to say that the majority of people have been considering Shinobu for the for a very long time. I, I don't know why, I never considered Shinobu, because whenever things went out of hand, uh, I remember when Law um, sort of abandoned the Alliance to go save his crew. And she was very, very fierce about not letting the single the single detail go out of rails so it would not foil the plan. She's very fierce when it comes to this. She needs this to, to go through because she knows everything. She knows why Odin lost in the first place. So, and I'm telling, there's something that's going to go wrong that she's gonna be a part of in the next chapter, I assume, that it's really going to scar her, like, more than anything else. So, Shinobu, for me, it's a big no-no. She can't be the traitor. She has no reason to be the traitor. So, I don't know. Unless this goes 360, I really do not know if she's the traitor or not. I would, I would believe that she's not a traitor. So, the next one, keep in mind, it's, it's my idea. So, it's, it's really far-fetched. And it's based on quite a few cans of beans. So, it's Toki slash Shiori. Now, there's a theory going around that Toki that Hiori is Toki, who jumped back, who jumped forward in time, and became Komorosaki, and whatnot. Because there's a lot of um, of discrepancies with Komorosaki's character. Like first we have the Komorosaki that's that's manipulative, that's cold-hearted, that makes all these plans to take money from people, from bad people, I should say. Um, but then, when she meets Zoro, and she's Yori, like, I don't know, it, 
there's a discrepancy. We don't see that that cold-hearted lady. We see a girlish woman who pouts and 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 gets angry and gets I don't know, not angry, but you know, little feisty with Kawamatsu, and she pouts and she blows her cheeks and makes all those cute faces. She lies next to Zoro because, oh, it was so cold, Mr. Samurai, so I decided to warm you with my body. I, I don't know, it just, it, it feels weird. Now, I am not a full-on supporter of the Hiori Stoki thing, but I do think that this panel that you see here with the wound, this has to be important. Like... This is not just something that Oda decided to... Maybe we are reading too much into this. But Oda would not show this for nothing. Like, this has to mean something. So, my first idea, and going back to the unwilling uh, side of the deal, I think that both Toki and Hiyori are the prime candidates to be the spy. But they are not doing so willingly. What do I think? I think that some way, somehow, the Beast Pirates have access to some sort of bug technology. I mentioned this on my review last week. Some sort of bug technology that allows them to implant something in people that would allow them to spy on them. And that's why Oda showed us the wound. So, for people who believe that Hiyori is Toki, the wound will will serve to, to show that Hiyori is indeed Toki, that she has the same wound. But for me, it just shows that she could have been implanted with something. Now, we can argue that, okay, so that could work for Toki, but not for Hiyori. Because Hiyori was absent during most of the planning. She didn't know where they would meet. I mean, she could have known if she saw the message, because she had the paper with her. I, we don't know if it, if it was he, Komurasaki that had the paper, or Kyoshiro. That's still debatable. So, yeah. And until we know for real who Kyoshiro is, and what's his deal, everything is up on the air. So, and yeah, I'm not a supporter of the Kyoshiro Denjiro theory, just out of, the, out of the bat. But we'll get to Denjiro in a bit. Uh, so, that's the only thing that debunks Hiyori, at least. But, yeah, Hiyori and Toki are not the strongest ones, but they're possibilities for me. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see. So, the last three, Kiku, Kanju, Kanjuro, and Raizo. Now... Again, the same with Shinobu, a lot of people, as soon as the traitor business came, came along, people were quick to judge these three. Raizo and Kanjuro, specifically, they were the most, they were the most targeted. Because people thought that, well, Raizo was arrested in Zo, the Beast Pirates knew he was in Zo, so... It is Raizo. I mean, we gotta consider that he was putting at risk. I mean, I'm gonna say this again, but of course, if the traitor is amongst the scabbards, he knew he was um, he was committing treason against all of them. But this guy willingly put the country of two of his most trusted friends in danger. So. And the way the Beast Pirates were asking for Raizo, it was not because he was the traitor. They wanted to kill him. Because they knew that he had escaped from Wano. They saw them ex escape from Wano. So, Kanjiro, I don't know why people think Kanjiro is the traitor. Maybe it's just because of his looks. I don't know. I never gave much thought on that, but... Again, people might say he was in the group that came back to the present. He was privy to all the information. And yeah, he knew that Raizo was in Zo. Well, how would he communicate with Wano then? I mean, sure he was left alone in Restrosa for quite a few weeks, but... 
really, the only one I could consider is Kiku. Because she was left in Wano, she was privy to all the information, and she was alone for time enough to plan all this. So, she would be able to give them a Viver card of Rizo, and all of that. That's another thing. How did the Beast Pirates found Zo? Who knows? Who knows? So, yeah, it must have been with the Viver card. There's no other option. So, yeah, any of these three, I don't see them, so debunk. We have one left. And I should have ended this a long time ago, so I'm gonna speed this along. It's Denjiro. So, bear in mind, this is not my theory. I'll have the theory on the link below, but you can see. It's a theory by a user named, a user named Gus from the One Piece fan page. Again, I'll leave the link in the description below. And he claims that we already discovered who the traitor is in 970. Remember this scene? where Ashura Doji is stabbed in the back. The way the scene is played, it makes it look like it's King who stabbed him. Gus, the author of this theory, has a different idea. Notice the hand that it's stabbing Ashura Doji. Yes. Now, this theory claims that Denjiro was the one who stabbed Ashura Doji, that Ashura Doji was actually facing King, and Denjiro stabbed him through the back. Now, there's a, there's a few problems with this, because on the picture on the right, the one that shows Denjiro a few years ago, the bracelets are in his right hand, are in his left hand. And here, uh, where, it's, where someone stabs Ashura Doji, the bracelets are on the right hand. So, yeah, of course, he could have changed them, he could, yes. But uh, this makes little sense for me, because in chapter 922, this was shown. Like, why would Denjiro be the traitor, stab Ashura Doji in the back, and then a few moments later, after their escape, stay behind with him to fight Kaido. Sure, that could have, that could have been a ruse, but Ashura Doji would have found out. And right now, he would say, oh, you know that guy, Denjiro, he was a freaking traitor. He betrayed us all. But no, that did not happen. So, although I understand where, this, where Gus is coming from with this theory, I really do not want to think that Denjiro is the traitor. Sure, it makes sense, because what we know of King, he has those black gloves, so his hand wouldn't show. This could be Queen's hand, but then again, Queen is kind of chubby himself, so... <sighs> and I don't remember if he has bracelets or not. But it just pans out, and... Denjiro, so far, is the most mysterious of the scabbards. We don't know where he is. We don't know if he's alive. I'm expecting him to be alive. I think, I myself think he's the Witching Hour Boy. I do not think he's Kyoshiro. I think Kyoshiro is a different guy. Maybe he's an ally. I do not put that out of option. I do not discard that option. But... Yes, that's another can of beans that we can open another time. So, but as for you, please tell me, who do you think out of all these options is a traitor? Option number one, Toki. Option number two, Hiyori. Option number three, Kiku. Option number four, Kanjuro. Option number five, Raizo. Or option number six, Denjiro. Or, even worse, option number seven, an unknown character. So, please do tell me what you think in your comment section down below. Right now, all my bets are on Denjiro. Either Denjiro or an unwilling Hiyori. So, that's it for me. Those are my options. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you I hope you've enjoyed 
this format of video. I know this is unusual. I said before when I used to, to record more often that I would do this type of videos more often, but now that I actually have a way to do it, I will try to, to do them more often. These are quite, these are quite fun to put together the, the PowerPoints and just present them here. So please do let me know if you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below on who do you think it's the one o traitor. I hope we get to the bottom of this mystery very, very soon because the community can't hold this anymore. We need to know. So thank you so much for watching and bye bye.